Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Father, for this day. I know that we're coming to you. We want to understand truth and we want to be guided into all truth. We want to stand on the firm platform of truth. And so, Father, as we study this topic, especially a topic that seems to be another one that is kind of come along that is new, we want to understand if it's truth or not. And also, Father, if it's not truth, we want to be well grounded to be able to provide an answer always of the hope that is in us with humility and with respect. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name and thank you. Amen. All right. So the study today is going to be the lunar Sabbath or the fact or fiction. And um, some of you might not even know what the lunar Sabbath is. Probably most of you do, I'm sure. But anyways, lunar Sabbath, I'll explain a little bit about it in a second. But this is just kind of the idea here is that what some people say is that the Sabbath was actually connected to the moon. And this is an encyclopedia. It's the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia from, and it's on the Sabbath. This is a po point about the Sabbath from 1906. And uh, this is Max Joseph. And this is what you'll hear from a lot of lunar Sabbatarians. They actually quote this source and they say, this is our source for the lunar Sabbath. But I just want you to listen to the words of this Max Joseph here as he describes the, the lunar Sabbath. He says, the origin of the Sabbath, as well as the true meaning of the name is uncertain. Now, do you guys know what the when the origin of the Sabbath is, or is it uncertain to anybody here, right? Genesis chapter 2, right? We all know the origin of the Sabbath, right? But this guy doesn't, okay? Just so you know, he says it's uncertain. This is the Jewish encyclopedia. And he says it was probably originally connected in some manner with the cult of the moon, as indeed is suggested by the frequent mention of Sabbath and new moon festivals in the same sentence. So... Does that sound like someone you would take as a reliable source of information? Somebody who's saying it was probably, you know, maybe, could have been, it might have been. Is that somebody you take like that really knows what they're talking about and you're going to just use as a reliable source of information? I'm just asking. And I'm just hoping that if there's any Lunar Sabbath keepers here, they know that they use this source as their reliable source of information. This is somebody who doesn't even know the origin of the Sabbath that you're using as a source of information, okay? So that's something off the bat that you should be like, that should raise some red flags. So from the very start of this. But anyway, continuing on, he actually continues. He says, the origin of the Sabbath is obscure, right? Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. So I know that the origin of the Sabbath was in six days, God created the earth and then rested the seventh day. That's the origin. And that's in the, in the fourth commandment. Let's keep going here. The new moon is still, he says, the new moon is still and the Sabbath originally was dependent on the lunar cycle. Well, he says, but it's a, it was obscure. So how can he say the origin was dependent on the lunar cycle when he doesn't know the origin? That's contradiction right there, right? Originally origin, you know, the word, but he doesn't know the origin. So that just, you when, if you're a lunar Sabbath keeper, or if you know lunar Sabbath keepers and they come to you with this stuff, cause they will, right. Then you just, you just give them some of these quotes. I'm, I'm happy to give everybody this PowerPoint, whoever wants it again, just email me dbaron at gmx.com. I will give you all the sources and information that you need in order to provide an answer to these brothers and bring them back into the light of the truth, you know, cause that's what we're here for. This is not just David Barron presenting here or nothing like that. This is like, as, as far as I'm concerned, the gospel is free, and so are the PowerPoints that I do. I'm not just doing it for myself. It's for everybody. But anyways, what is a new moon? In short, the new moon is the beginning of each month in the Bible. It is the first or new day of the month. Ezekiel 46.1 says the gates are open on the new moon day. The Hebrew word for months in the following text is kodesh. That's the Hebrew word for new moon, kodesh, which means a new moon. The beginning of this day is marked by a particular phase of the moon. The Jews marked it by the first visible crescent after the change from a dark moon. So they would mark it like there's a lot of historical evidence that tells us that they would sight the moon from the mountains and stuff like that. Some people go by a dark moon, but that's not what the Jews did, especially in the time of Jesus. And we can go to the Passover. That's the day Jesus was crucified. They, used, they definitely used a, a, a visible crescent to identify the new moon. So... Again, what is a new moon? Well, a new moon is actually an assembly, and it's the beginning of the month. That's what it is. So make thee two trumpets of silver, a whole piece. Thou shalt make them, that you may use them for calling of the assembly. So the trumpets were given. They made these trumpets in Numbers chapter 10. And when they blow them, they were to assemble themselves. 
to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And then verse 10 says, in the day of your gladness, which is your Sabbaths, and then in the day of your solemn days, which is your feast days, and then in the beginning of your months, which is your Kodesh, your new moons, you shall blow with the trumpets over the burnt offerings, over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and you may do them for a memorial before your God. So they were appointed times to do the sacrifices. And you'll see this in Second Chronicle, First Chronicles 23, Second Chronicles 2, 4, that you would offer sacrifices on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the holy days, according to the order commanded in them in Numbers chapter 28. So, you know, a lot of Sabbath keepers don't know that the Sabbaths actually were appointed times for doing sacrifices, but they were. But Sabbath, new moons, and holy days are often associated together. These are your weekly, your monthly, and your annually. And so when the Sabbath and new moons are associated together, what some people get the idea of is they think that because they're associated together, that means that you keep the seventh day according to the new moon. But the Bible does not give any instructions like that. They just assume it. There's no instruction in the Bible to say, yes, we got to start the seventh day every new moon and then we count seven 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 etc i'll go into this a little bit more as we continue and explain what they do what a lunar sabbath is but they're associated together in the new testament let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink which was the lord's supper replace the sacrifices right my flesh is meat my blood is drink he said in john six sixty three, or 654 sorry but he says, or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So there's holy days, new moon, Sabbath days. And these are appointed times to come together to have communion. And the Jews were being judged because they didn't have, or sorry, the Colossians were being judged by the Jews because they wouldn't have, you know, where's, where's your sacrifice? We, we do sacrifices on these Sabbath, holy, holy days and new moons. That's what you need in order to be saved. You got to do a sacrifice. They were judging them as lost, right? So but um, they were misunderstanding that, you know, Christ died. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast or let us keep the new moon or let us keep the Sabbath. First Corinthians chapter five, seven and eight. But anyway, continuing on, Isaiah 66, 22 and 23 says, As the new, moon, new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So there's an association of the new moons and Sabbaths together. This is in the new heaven, new earth. So what a, a lot of lunar Sabbath keepers have come to do is connect the two together instead of just letting the Bible interpret itself. And it's actually giving you two different cycles, the new moon and the Sabbath, just like the feast is a different cycle. But Ellen White talked about the new moons in heaven. She said that God teaches that we should assemble in his house to cultivate the attributes of perfect love. That's today and now. And this will fit the dwellers of earth for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for all who love him. There they will assemble. Remember, these are assemblies. They will assemble in the sanctuary from Sabbath to Sabbath, from new moon to new moon, to unite in loftiest strains of song and praise and thanksgiving to him who sits upon the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. That's a quote from Revelation 22, talking about coming together every month at the tree of life. That's, you know, to God and the lamb. But that's the connection there. Every month, the word month is a new moon in Revelation 22. And it's also connected to Ezekiel 47 as well. And James White actually connected these together here. He says, when the restorer shall have established the immortal saints in the new earth, it will continue its revolutions. And the sun and the moon will measure off days and months and years as long as eternal ages shall roll. Now, there will be a sun and moon in the new heaven and earth. There might not be a need of it, but there will be one because there's going to be new moons. But it says the redeemed will have right to the tree of life, which Adam lost through disobedience. That tree yields 12 manner fruits each month. And why may not the words of the prophet in reference to all flesh appearing before the Lord from one new moon to another be fulfilled when the eternal family of the redeemed shall come each month to partake of the new fruit of the tree of life. So James White understood that we were going to keep new moons in heaven. These are Something that some people say is nailed to the cross, they misuse Colossians 2.16 to say, you know, Sabbaths, New Moons, and Holy Days are nailed to the cross. And then they, a lot of Sabbath keepers think that that's referring to annual Sabbaths, but it's a misuse of the word. And uh, we're going to keep them. They're things, shadows of things to come. It shall come to pass that from one Sabbath to another, from one new moon to another, in the new heaven, new earth, that we will come to worship. 
at these appointed times in these assemblies. Jay and Andrews also talked about it as well. And I know some people use him against the feasts and Sabbaths and new moons, but I think he was, there were certain things that he couldn't deny, such as the fact that all flesh, he says, shall come to worship before Jehovah from Sabbath to Sabbath, from new moon to new moon. And it'll be possible for the human family to observe the Sabbath over the whole globe. Uh oh, sorry to the uh, flat earthers on that one. But he says, we appeal to see if it be not so, all flesh will have the Sabbath and the tree of life as first design, both of which were made before the fall. The tree of life shall yield its fruit every month, and thus shall its fruit be ready for those who shall come up from one new moon to another. So interestingly, Jay and Andrews, James White, Ellen White, all of them talked about coming together in the new moons and the new heaven, new earth. So these new moons are actually appointed times and assemblies that God's people should be doing today they're not nailed to the cross and then going to be taken off the cross when we get to heaven as some people have assumed that's that's a definite not rightly dividing of the word of god that is a misunderstanding uh revelation 21 2 it says he showed me a pure river of water of life proceeding out of the throne of god and the lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare 12 manner fruits and yields of fruit every new moon every month and this is basically how the new moon works. I shared some of this yesterday, but they, the, this, is, this is the cycle of the moon, about, about a 30-day cycle, 29 and a half days here. And you'll see the moon on every day, what it looks like every day as it reflects the light of the sun. And so the new moon comes around and then you have a dark moon as it's closer to the sun, where as when it's furthest away from the sun and on the back of the earth, you'll see the whole entire moon, which is called the full moon. So that takes about 14 days. That's the Passover time. But on the first day of the month, you'll start to see the shining of the reflection of the moon. That's that's your new moon. And um, that's the cycle and how it works. Every 29 or 30 days, the, the moon makes its cycle around the earth. That's how it works. And uh, what is a lunar Sabbath? Well, as it comes back around, some have said that they have begin their Sabbath count on the first day of the month or the new moon and keep the Sabbath every seven days after. Some use the dark moon rather than the crescent, but that's not the, the proper way to keep it. But anyways, a new moon is the first of the month. But a lot of these people say that the beginning of the month starts with the new moon and then we keep a Sabbath on the 8th on the 15th, on the 22nd, and the 29th. The 8th, the 15th, 22nd, and 29th. And that is called the lunar Sabbath or lunar solar calendar. And they they do their Sabbaths differently. They don't go by a continuous weekly cycle of every seven days because they have to restart every new moon. They'll get to the 29th and then they'll have a day or a half a day sometimes and then they'll start again. And that's, it's a mixed up cycle. Every month, the Sabbath is on a different day. Next month, if one month it's Sunday. The next month it could be, whatever day you want it to be. I mean, it's, or whatever day it could be Wednesday. It could be whatever day the new moon falls on. So how do Sabbatarians attempt to prove the Sabbath calendar is calculated from the moon? Well, again, they use Genesis 114, let there be lights for days and years and, and months and, and, and also signs and seasons. And, and they use this and they say, okay, so you have to use the sun, the moon and the stars to calculate the Sabbath. You can't go without one. And um, actually, I don't know if they mentioned the stars, but they do definitely say that the sun and moon is what you have to use to keep the Sabbath. And that's why that's why they that's how they use Genesis 1 14. It's it's not very good reasoning. It doesn't instruct you on how to keep it actually that way. But they also use this verse, of course, from one Sabbath to another in Isaiah 66. And I'm just going to ask a question. Do these texts really teach us to use the new moon to calculate the seventh day Sabbath? Or are these assumptions? And I, I would say that there's a lot of assuming going on. There's a lot of jumping to conclusions going on. There's definitely not. They're definitely assumptions. And I'm going to explain this from the Bible. The Bible is definitely going to, going to tell us that there is no way that the new moon is used to keep the Sabbath. So, but it, again, if your new moon falls on Sunday this month, you keep it Sunday. Next month, it's Tuesday. Next month, it's Wednesday. It changes every new moon. But the Sabbath cycle is a cycle from creation. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. That's how we know that God, where the cycle of the Sabbath comes from, it's from creation. And uh, even Ellen White herself talked about this. She says, I was then carried back to the creation. Now, this is not just like 
just her opinion. This is actually a vision where she's shown these things. And the vision, you know, it's either from God or it's from the devil. I mean, one of the two. And so if you're going to believe in the lunar Sabbath, you're definitely going to have to reject anything that the spirit of prophecy says, because this is obviously not God carrying her back, right? But he, she says, I was then carried back to the creation and was shown that the first week in which God performed the work of creation in six days and rest of the seventh day was just like every other week. The great God in his days of creation and day of rest measured off the first cycle as a sample for successive weeks till the close of time. The weekly cycle of seven literal days, six for labor and the seventh for rest, which has been preserved and brought down through history, originated in the facts of the first seven days. So there's a weekly cycle that has continued from creation. That was her opinion. She was shown that um, by an angel or something, at least. But anyways, three months in a row, some say that after the Exodus, there was a Sabbath on the 15th of every month for three months in a row. Is this true? And this is a book that was written by Lunar Sabbath Keepers called Three Months in a Row. So I would just like to examine this and break it down and just look at the Bible. Does it actually say that they kept um, the fifth? The Sabbath was the 15th of every month for three months in a row, because that's their proof kind of to of the idea that the Sabbath falls on the 15th every month so let's just look at this uh, leviticus 23 the bible tells us that the 14th of the first month is the passover the 15th day of the first month and seventh month is an annual sabbath if we look at Levitic leviticus 23 and also in the 15th day of the seventh month it says we when you have gathered in the fruit of your land you shall keep the feast to the lord seven days on the first day shall be a sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a sabbath so these are annual sabbaths and they always fall in the first and seventh month on the 15th day particularly. Now, is there a difference between a weekly Sabbath and a feast Sabbath? Let's look at the Bible to examine this because it might be possible that maybe not all Sabbaths fall on the 15th of the month. And there might be a difference between them. And I'm going to look at some of these differences from the Bible here just to explain. But Exodus chapter 12, the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. So this was the first month of the year to them when they came out of Egypt. And that was when they had the Passover. And the angel passed over. And then the 15th day of the month, we're going to examine some facts around it. But if we show that the 15th day of this first month where they exited Egypt is not a weekly Sabbath, then that would imply that the 15th is not always a weekly Sabbath. And that implies that the lunar Sabbath is a completely false doctrine right from one all you have to do is prove that one month they didn't have a sabbath on the 15th that's all you have to prove uh and so let's just take a look here exodus 12 15 says seven days you shall eat unleavened bread even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day which is the 15th until the seventh day which is the 22nd that soul shall be cut off from israel okay so the first day is the 15th and that's Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15. This is the Passover chapter, Exodus 12. Now, continuing in verse 16 and 17, it says, In the first day, which is the 15th day, right, the Sabbath, there shall be a holy convocation, and you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Exodus 12, 16, 17. So was this a weekly Sabbath when he brought the armies out of the land of Egypt? The Bible says in, um, well, in Jeremiah, it says, or no, sorry, Numbers, Numbers 33, it says they departed from Ramses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month, which is the Sabbath according to them, right? So they all moved 70,000 people, picked up all their belongings, all their sheep, and everything and god commanded them to leave egypt on the sabbath day that's what they're saying if you believe in a lunar sabbath they're saying that god actually had them do all this work on the sabbath day with a high hand in the sight of the egyptians numbers 33 verse 3 is that is that something that god would have them do well jeremiah 17 21 tells us this it says thus saith the lord take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the sabbath day nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. No traveling, as in traveling and carrying all a bunch of stuff and just moving your stuff or whatever. That was not something that God would have them do on the Sabbath. And 
you know, we also see in Matthew 24 where Jesus talks about pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath day, right? So obviously the Sabbath day was not a day that God would have them say, okay, you know what? Let's have your flight on the Sabbath day. Let's move out of Egypt on the Sabbath day. You know, that's not something that God would do. So obviously this day is not a weekly Sabbath. This is an annual Sabbath. And on an annual Sabbath, you can do certain things. And I'm going to explain this, that there's a difference between annual Sabbath and weekly Sabbath. We'll look at some verses on this. But this is from the very start. Obviously, you can already see that this is false doctrine. But I'm not, I'm not done here. This is going to continue. Differences between weekly and annual Sabbath. Well, a weekly Sabbath, you shall do no work on a weekly Sabbath. Leviticus 23, verse 3. Now, regarding the first day of unleavened bread, it said you shall do no servile work. So there's a difference, right? You can't bear a burden on the Sabbath and move out, of the con- move out to the country on the Sabbath. That's no work at all. And on the annual Sabbath, you can do no servile work. So there's certain things you can do, like carry your stuff out of Egypt, right? But there's no servile work means no working for some man or something like that. And... Uh, also cooking and stuff like that i'll explain here in a second but there's more see exodus 16 talks about the weekly sabbath and it says that god said to them that that which is tomorrow is the rest of the holy sabbath under the lord and he says bake that which you will bake today that's the preparation day the weekly sabbath has a preparation day the annual sabbath has no preparation day. We'll, we'll, we'll notice the difference here in a second. But he said he would show them that you would prepare. You don't want, we don't want you doing any work on the weekly Sabbath. That includes cooking, God was showing them. And so he says, bake that which you will bake today and see that which you will see and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So no cooking on the seventh day Sabbath, right? Now, Exodus 12, back to Exodus 12 here, which is the Passover and the day of unleavened bread, the first day of unleavened bread. What does it say they did on the first day of unleavened bread? It says that they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. So that means that they didn't have a preparation day for this annual Sabbath. And they baked unleavened cakes on the 15th day, the self-same day that they came out of Egypt. So that implies that there is some work is allowed on this day. We're allowed to bake. We're allowed to cook. That means there's no preparation day. That's what it means. That's, that's what it implies. There's no preparation day for the annual Sabbath. But uh, um, Exodus 16, 23, again, no baking. We looked at that here. And... For some reason, that's double parted. But any, anyways, Numbers 33, they departed in the selfsame day that he brought the armies out of the land of Egypt, which is the 15th day of the first month they departed. That's Those are the connections. You can connect those verses from Exodus 12, 17, and 41 to Numbers 33. So that's the same day they departed. At, in the night, they departed. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. Because some lo- lunar Sabbath keepers have come to the idea. I don't know if have any, anybody's ever heard of this idea. That they believe that the term day is only referred to as the daylight hours of the day. But God brought them out on the 15th day. And was it was it just the daylight hours that included were included in the 15th day? Or was it at nighttime the 15th day? Was it was obviously the nighttime. The 15th day includes the day time and the nighttime. You see? And uh, that's that's what it says. Actually, let's keep reading here. What does it say in verse 42 of Exodus 12? It says, It came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the night, from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed under the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. So the idea of uh, the night not being part of the day, that's a false doctrine. And it's one that's gaining ground, another one. I don't know how these things actually come about, but they are some strange ones. And people are not looking at their Bibles carefully. Obviously, the, the night is included in the 15th day, right? That's uh, the 15th day, the selfsame day that they came out of Egypt, the 15th day of the month. But a daylight Sabbath, they left Egypt at midnight on the 15th day. So it, there's no such thing as just a daylight Sabbath. That's another false doctrine. 
And that stems from the lunar Sabbath keepers because they have to, they can't say that God would actually make them work or carry a burden or whatever in the nighttime, right? Or on the Sabbath day, you know? So that's why they try to say it's only a daylight Sabbath. And then at night, you're allowed to work. And, and it's all it's all stemming from the lunar Sabbath doctrine, which is a false doctrine. But the Bible tells us from even to even, she shall you celebrate your Sabbath, Leviticus 23, 32. The evening and the morning were the first day implies that the night and the day is the first day. It includes the whole entire thing. And so they're trying to twist up a lot of these verses and make their doctrine fit. But it's reality is, is that it doesn't fit. Now, three months in a row, back to three months in a row, we already went over the first month. So the 15th day of the first month was not a weekly Sabbath, but the first one being the 15th of the first month was an annual Sabbath. It was an annual Sabbath. So from this point alone, there is really nothing more needed, but we're going to make sure that there's a whole bunch more here. Just, you know, we, we should really just make sure that this is completely destroyed. Now, continuing on, says the wilderness experience, this doctrine leads us away from God's true Sabbath, right? Which is which is one of the last day truths of this of, for God's people. And not just that, but I, I've met a lot of lunar Sabbath keepers, and I'll tell you right now that they don't even keep those days that are that they really believe are lunar Sabbaths anymore. Like a lot of them just fall away from the Sabbath completely and they stop keeping the Sabbath altogether. But manna comes down six days. They prepared their food on the sixth and rested the seventh day. A wilderness experience six days, ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall no work be done. In it there shall be none. Right? So there's no manna, sorry. Why doesn't it make mention of the lunar Sabbath or the new moon in regards to the manna dropping from heaven? Like if God is bringing them out of Egypt and teaching them about the Sabbath and how to keep it properly, why is there no mention of, oh, yeah, this is going to begin every new moon, by the way. We're going to do this again every new moon. And um, Exodus 35.3, you should kindle no fire throughout your habitation on the Sabbath day. That's another issue, no kindling of fires on the Sabbath day. But yet, if you read Exodus 12, when they came out of Egypt on the annual Sabbath, they ate the flesh at night, roasted it with fire, and then they burnt the remains with fire. So there was fire on the Sabbath day, on the annual Sabbath. And not just that, but also what about gathering of sticks? It says, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day, the weekly Sabbath, right? And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, this is a pretty serious offense, obviously. He's gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And... God was not even like he, he, he had him killed with stones. That's, that's how serious this offense was to God. But in regards to the annual Sabbath, if you look in Leviticus 23, 39, talking about the feast of Pen or tabernacles, it says in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you've gathered in the fruit of your land, you shall keep a feast of the Lord seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath. You shall take to you one on the first day, the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees and bows of thick trees and willows of the brook and you shall dwell in booths seven days and all the israelites that are born shall dwell in booths so they were to take sticks and pick them up and put build buildings and little teepees and 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 tabernacles and stuff like that it was called the feast of tabernacles and on the sabbath day they were to do these things so they were allowed to pick up sticks on an annual sabbath but a weekly sabbath was a serious offense there's a difference between the weekly and the annual. Also, the weekly sacrifices, two lambs on the Sabbath day. You know, lots of people don't know about sacrifice on the weekly, and they try to do away with the Sabbath, with the feast, because they have sacrifices on them. But the reality is, is that the Sabbath even has sacrifices, including two lambs on this day. But this is a problem with the annual Sabbath, because if you go continue in the same chapter, on the annual Sabbath, the first day of of unleavened bread it, sh it says you shall do no manner of servile work therein but you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering to the lord two bulls one ram seven lambs of the first year they shall be brought unto you without blemish and one goat for a sin offering so there was a difference between the weekly sabbath and the annual sabbath there was obviously a big difference in regards to what were what were to be offered in regards to sacrifices 
on these days. So we've got a whole bunch of differences between a weekly Sabbath and an annual Sabbath. On a weekly Sabbath, you have no travel, no work at all, no cooking or baking at all, no kindling fires, no gathering sticks. You sacrifice two lambs, and there is a preparation day for the weekly Sabbath. Whereas on the annual Sabbath, you're commanded to travel. There is no servile work, which is obviously not no work at all, because there was cooking and baking bread on that day. And there's kindling of fire on that day. And there's gathering of sticks on that day. And then there's a sacrifice of two bulls, one ram, seven lambs, and one goat, a different sacrifice. And there is no preparation day for this, which is different than Exodus. So there's a big difference between an annual Sabbath and a weekly Sabbath. That's 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 a lot of difference. So so what we have on the 15th is obviously an annual Sabbath and not a weekly Sabbath. There's definitely that is definitely not a weekly Sabbath. And the 15th is not always a weekly Sabbath. Um, regarding the crucifixion, this is another issue that a lot of people have the crucifixion on Friday and not a Wednesday, but a lot of people say it was a Wednesday crucifixion. Now, I've already mentioned the fact that there is no preparation for the annual Sabbath. We went over that in Exodus 12. But here we see that it says he took it down, wrapped it in linen, this is Luke 23, and laid it in a sepulcher and it was hewn in stone, whereas never man before was laid. And that day was a preparation and the Sabbath drew on. Now, is there a preparation on Tuesday? If the annual Sabbath falls on Wednesday, does it, is there a preparation day on Tuesday? Is it, we've already learned that there's no preparation on Tuesday. So there, we've just we've just got rid of another doctrine, which is the Wednesday crucifixion, right? Because all we need to do is just study these things. So there's we've got rid of the Wednesday crucifixion, we've gotten rid of the daylight Sabbath and the lunar Sabbath already, all in this so far. You know, and not just that, but we've also proven that new moons are going to be kept in heaven. And that's, we've learned all that within like half an hour. False doctrines are just falling aside. You see that? Right. But anyways, it says the Sabbath drew on and the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day, according to the commandment, which is the fourth commandment, right? Resting on the seventh day and that's when jesus was crucified it was a friday it's obviously the preparation day is fell just before the sabbath and that's that's the day he was he was crucified so <clears throat> that's that's easy to prove you can prove that from the bible just from the bible alone because if you know and understand that annual sabbaths don't have a preparation day then you can show a friday crucifixion right but historical evidence, well, it's said by lunar Sabbath observers that Jesus kept the lunar Sabbath, which implies that Jews were keeping it according to the moon, at least up until 31 AD, right? Some lunar Sabbath believers say that Jesus kept it. So we got it. We're going to see and look here in a second. But the historical evidence, they have none. And I'll, I'll come to that in a second. But it says it is well known, documented fact that by 321 AD, Constantine was enforcing religious observances on Sunday and that the day was changed from Saturday and that the Jews were definitely observing a continuous seven day cycle by this time. So we have definite evidence in history of a weekly cycle that was seven days, at least 321 AD so far. OK, at least that time. So the so the excuse me the change that they're saying if jesus kept the lunar sabbath they're changed from a weekly cycle to an annual or a monthly cycle right would have had to happen between 31 ad and 321 ad that's it would have to happen there so we should find historical evidence on this from 31 ad to 321 ad so let's just take a look at some of the historical evidence now if they were to change let's just say july 4th from july 4th to july 17th you know in america right we would find some historical evidence of this change like oh yeah the day the independence day was celebrated on july 4th and now it's been changed to july 17th and there'd probably be an uproar you know like some people would be like okay you're going to change our national holiday our holiday that 
celebrates, you know, that we celebrate every year of our declaration of independence. This is, this is like the day that every, like people would go crazy, right? Like you'd be seeing some writings about it and some arguings back and forth. No way you can change the day. No way. We're not changing the day. Right. So this is how it would be documented. Now, what about the weekly Sabbath? Uh, that would be more like probably more important to the Jews than July 4th, right? That's their weekly day, right? A day that was celebrated on a weekly basis. And then all of a sudden there's a change and some people are like, okay, let's, let's all as a nation just change it together, right? From this week to next week. So we got to find the week in which we went from a lunar Sabbath to a weekly Sabbath. What week did that happen in? We, we want the his, history. We want to document this. Is there any history of this change from a weekly Sabbath? Now, I've already mentioned Max Joseph, and I want to just go over the Jewish encyclopedia. This is the history that is presented oftentimes, this Jewish encyclopedia, Max Joseph. But he says again, and let me repeat this, the new moon is still in the Sabbath was originally dependent on the lunar cycle. But again, that's the in the next sentence he says the origin of the sabbath was obscure right so this is not reliable historical evidence despite the fact that lunar sabbath keepers present it as their evidence it's not and some people read this and they're like oh wow like when they read it they're like oh it was it was the Jewish Encyclopedia says so from 1906, right? That's that's how people read it. And they think that that's actually a reliable historical source. They're not doing their research. And it's easy to convince people sometimes when you have something that seems so official, like a Jewish encyclopedia, you know, that just that makes it like something like people are convinced by. But it's not. The, the guy says in the same sentence, the origin of the Sabbath is, is obscure. In, in other words, I don't understand when it originated. I don't even know. I've never, you know, I don't believe Genesis 2, when God created the heaven, created the world, the heaven and earth in six days. But um, he continues, the origin of the Sabbath, as well as the true meaning of this name, is uncertain. Wow. It was probably, maybe, you know, might have been originally connected in some manner with the cult of the moon. As indeed is suggested by the frequent mention of Sabbath and new moon festivals in the same sentence. When the Israelites settled in the land and became farmers, their new life would have made it desirable that the Sabbath should come at regular intervals. And the desired change would have been made all the more easily as they had abandoned the lunar Sabbath religion. So they abandoned the lunar religion when they entered the land and became farmers. This is definitely before Jesus. And I don't know if the Lunar Sabbath Keepers are reading this, but if Lunar Sabbath Keepers are using this as a source and telling me that Jesus kept the Lunar Sabbath, well, this book that they're using is telling them that the Lunar Sabbath was changed in a time that they came into the land way before Jesus even came to earth. So their, their sources are completely neglect. I mean, they're just, they're not, they're use, useless, okay? But anyways, when they became farmers, and there's no evidence of this as well, right? They just say it. Like when they became farmers, it was just necessary to do a weekly cycle. Like it just became something that just happened eventually because we had to, because, you know, it was better for better to go along with the rest of the world, I guess, as if, you know, the world created a weekly cycle, right? That is, um, that is not truth. And that's not reliable historical evidence right there okay so if that's what you're using as a lunar sabbath keeper you need to really reconsider that reconsider that and just say well maybe i don't have any historical evidence that's not a real good source because this guy says right here it was probably originally connected in some manner with the cult of the moon meaning it might have been and he calls it a cult of the moon like as if like you know lunar sabbath sabbath new moon and new moon is some kind of cult but anyways Probably, maybe my guess is I think it might be this is not something that you use to prove things. Don't use this Jewish encyclopedia if you're going to be a, a lunar Sabbath keeper. But anyway, they uh, the farming issues, they came in the land 1400 years before Christ. So that definitely doesn't work for for historical evidence. But again, we'll keep the idea that they did believe that Christ kept the lunar Sabbath and we'll go to um, some more historical evidence here. Philo Judea says a nation of the Jews keeps 
every seventh day regularly. And um, he says, after an interval of each six days, and there is an account of events recorded in the history of the creation of the world, comprising a sufficient relation of the cause of this ordinance. For the sacred historian says that the world was created in six days, and that on the seventh day, God desisted from all his works and began to contemplate what he had so beautifully created. So here Philo is actually saying, like, the Jews keep it continuously and have kept it continuously since creation. Since creation. And then there's more witnesses. There's a whole bunch of eyewitnesses that were around at this time. Here is um, an eyewitness from the first century, and it is from the Talmud, which is written in the first century. And it says, Our zero replied, the new moon is different from a festival. If a new moon falls on a Sabbath, meaning what does that mean if a new moon falls on a Sabbath? That means that new moons are not always Sabbath days, right? If a new moon falls on a Sabbath, which means it might not fall on the Sabbath, it says that one recites in his additional prayer eight benedictions and Beth Hillel ruled seven. This is indeed a difficulty. So they had a lot of written rules out in the Talmud that weren't really biblical. But anyways, that's uh, they debated these things. You know, they debated everything in the Talmud. And that's the lunar Sabbath. And whether we keep it according to the moon was not one of them, not in the first century or anything like that. It should have been if it was changed between the first and third, right? Or the first between Jesus being on earth and the, and, and the time in which that was written. But anyways, continuing on, it says that, um, oh, I cut this off. But anyways, I got the top of it. This is Talmud again. It says, Mishnah, the bones and the sinews and the nothar and the paschal lamb are to be burnt on the 16th. If the 16th falls on a Sabbath, they are to be burnt on the 17th, which means that the, the day in which the Passover lamb was to be burnt, the first day of unleavened bread, could sometimes fall on the 16th. It could sometimes not fall on the 16th. That means it's not the 15th day of the month, every month. That's that's not the way it is, right? So anyways, and more proof from the first century. This is right when Jesus was there. Imagine if they're going from a weekly Sabbath from Jesus' time to this time, which is, who knows, like a few years after, right? They're just, there's going to be some debate about whether or not we should do this on a weekly cycle continuously or whether we should do this according to the new moons. That's historical evidence. But those little historical quotes are Max Joseph, right? They even say Jesus' time, they had already changed the Sabbath. So their own historical quotes tell us, the Lunar Sabbath historical quotes that they use, which are from Max Joseph, they tell us that Jesus didn't, didn't keep a Lunar Sabbath. They tell us that. Max Joseph tells us that the Lunar Sabbath was changed before Jesus. But they they use it when they want to use it, right? That's that's what's going on with lunar Sabbath, or they don't know any better. I understand, but um, anyways, continuing on another quote from the Talmud: "Since the congregation bring on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles when it falls on a Sabbath, so, um, again, why why would they say when the first day falls on a Sabbath if?" If, if it's changed, right? Like if it changes every, unless it changes every month, it should have always fallen on the Sabbath, according to the Lunar Sabbath teaching. So again, we've got so much evidence here from the Talmud. This is another one. They debated about almost everything. Something as major as a change in the Sabbath is observed ought to have been at least debated somewhere. Like there should have been some kind of debate going on between 31 AD and in this, in this first century at some point that they changed it. They, they should have had something going on in regards to like the confusion that was happening right but there's no debate going on that should speak volumes right there you know like july 4th change it see what happens and see if they don't debate about that one you know just see what happens right but anyways uh Ptolemy after alexander the great died in 330 a bc and this is 330 years before jesus here we have 330 years before Jesus, what do they say? Do they say that there was a lunar Sabbath back then? Well, this is what they said. They said there were people called the Jews and dwell in a city, the strongest of all other cities, which the inhabitants called Jerusalem and are accustomed to rest on every seventh day, in which times they make no use of their arms, nor meddle with husbandry, nor take care of any affairs 
of life, but spread out their hands in their holy places and pray till the evening. Now it came to pass that when Ptolemy, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but the son of Lagus came into the city with his army, that these men in observing this mad custom of theirs, instead of guarding the city, suffered their country to submit itself to a bitter Lord. Yeah. But anyways, I, I've got the actual reference down there. I know it's on there. It's just, I messed up when I was making this slide. So anyways, there is uh there is references for this. This is 330 years before Jesus. This is in the time of the, almost Alexander the great, right? So they had a weekly Sabbath and that's how they got destroyed. But it says from another one here, and this is again from uh, historical eyewitness. This is from 94 to 30, 132 AD, just after Jesus died. And John, the prophet, would have just died. But it says, from a spot on top of the temple, chambers, a priest would blow a trumpet on Sabbath Eve, not morning, to announce the arrival of the Sabbath and the cessation of all labor, and to announce the following evening the departure of the Sabbath and the resumption of all labor. The entire city was visible from this spot on the southwest corner of the Temple Mount. The clarion call of the trumpet would reach the furthest markets of the city. Such a scene re is recounted by Josephus in his work, The Jewish War. So they, they would blow the trumpet on the Sabbath Eve. And this is, again, another appointed time. And Sabbath Eve means it starts in the evening again, not morning. That's another proof. But Wars of the Jews. Every seventh day in the evening, twilight. Again, another daylight Sabbath contradiction right there, Josephus. And they would stand and signal beforehand a trumpet beginning the seventh day. Every seventh day. It's not like it's just like every seventh day until the new moon comes. You know, that doesn't, that's not how it's worded. And none of these quotes are worded this way. And this is like first century witnesses. These are, these are witnesses just at the time of, um, these again, Flavius Joseph, Josephus, again, nor had the Romans succeeded in their endeavors had not Pompey taken notice of the seven days on which the Jews abstained from all sorts of work on a religious account and raised his bank, but restrained his soldiers from fighting on those days for the Jews only acted defensively on Sabbath days. So they, they only acted defensively on Sabbath days. They did not go forward in in um, offensive battles, right? To chase people or anything like that. They would just defend their people on the Sabbath day. Of course, you know, you're not going to let somebody come in and, and kill you all. But this is, this, is, um, this is what the Jews would abstain from work on. Now, did they do an offensive day on the eighth day of the month, which would be a Sabbath according to, according to the lunar Sabbatarians, but not according to, not if, if it's a continuous weekly cycle, it can be a, you know, it can be, it can be the first day or second day or third day or fourth day of the week. Right. But here's what it says. It says the Jews went on pursuing the Romans. That's offensive, not defensive. As far as Antipatris, after which seeing they could not overtake them, they came back and took the engine and spoiled the dead bodies and gathered the prey together, which the Romans had left behind them. The defeat happened on the eighth day of the month, Dias, Marches Van, in the 12th year of the reign of Nero. Josephus war the Jews, book two. So if the eighth day, of, eighth day is a Sabbath, why were they aggressive in pursuing the Romans if they're not just in defense, right? And um, there's so much more. I, I mean, this is just like a small sample of historical evidence, what I'm giving you. Like, there's just tons. You, I, you could go look up stuff in the history and you could get just evidence after evidence after evidence because it's just, it's just not there. Their ideas are not there. And so I'm just giving you a few things just to kind of say, like, look, this is not the truth that there was a Sabbath on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, 29th. That's not biblical, nor is it historical. But uh, again, as it was, they made an excavation of what are called the days of Saturn, Saturn, Saturday. And by doing no work at all on those days, afforded the Romans an opportunity in this interval to batter down the wall. Thus, the defenders were captured on the day of Saturn without making any defense, and all the wealth was plundered. So they used Saturday, and his, historians understood that Saturday, or the day of Saturn, was the Sabbath of the Jews. They didn't say, oh, sometimes it's on Wednesday, sometimes it's on Thursday, sometimes it's on Sunday. That's, you know, changes every new moon or lunar, lunar Sabbath. There's, 
That's 63 BC as well. This is a historic quote from 63 BC, which is 90 years before Christ, proving that Christ never kept the lunar Sabbath. Right there. Right? Anyways, another one from the same, same, uh, same author. This is 36 BC. It says, The Jews indeed had done much injury to the Romans, but they suffered far more themselves. The first of them to be captured were those who were fighting for the precinct of their God. And then the rest on the day, then the rest on the day, even then called the day of Saturn. Again, Saturday. See, that's what the Romans would call it, the day of Saturn. And it's the Sabbath. They, they knew it wasn't on Tuesday. They knew it wasn't on Wednesday, Thursday. That's 36 years before Christ. They kept it on Saturday, the day of Saturn, as they called it. And so it says, so excessive were they in their devotion of religion that the first set of prisoners, those who had been captured along with the temple, obtained leave from Sosius when the day of Saturn came round again and went up into the temple and there performed all the customary rites together with the rest of the people. So, yeah, lots of evidence here. And, and honestly, it's just, it's just, we need, just need to be honest and just look at this evidence. So Lunar Sabbath Keepers, have to if if you have time and you know a lunar sabbath keeper take this evidence take this powerpoint and sit down with them just sit down with them because it's it all all they have to do is be an honest person and and they can say well yeah obviously okay i get it now so i i've been misled right but um historical evidence first century eyewitnesses 84 ad the deified augustus vespasian attacked the jews on the day of saturn the day on which it was sinful for them to do any business and again this is 84 ad so this is when john is alive this is when you know like there's jesus has just left the earth at this point and it's called the day of saturn again yeah that you can just do google searches and stuff and come up with lots of evidence of this stuff but anyway dead sea scrolls documents that the weekly sabbath didn't fall on the first eighth or 15th or 22nd and 29th in several places and i've just got a, a, a selection of them down here the mishmarat text are the priestly service text the mishmarat is a hebrew term meaning the watches and is used in this instance as a reference to the 24 watches or courses of the levitical priesthood and those are mentioned in the book of um I can't remember, it's Kings, right, or, or Samuel. But anyways, on the first day in the week of Jedidiah, which falls on the 12th in the seventh month, first day of the week falls on the 12th day of the month. Now, how can the first day of the week fall on the 12th day of the month? That would mean the seventh day would fall on the 11th, which means that the seventh day doesn't fall on the 15th or the 8th, right? And there's much more, like the fifth day of the week of Immer, on the 23rd day of the 10th month, which would mean the seventh day would fall on the 25th day. So there again, you're off with the 20, 22nd and 29th, right? We're on the fourth day of the week of Jeshua, which falls on the 20th of the second month, which means the fifth, sixth, seventh would be on the 23rd instead of the 22nd. So there's all kinds of writings like that that you can get out of these, out of these Mishmarat texts, which were in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they prove that the seventh day Sabbath was a weekly continuous cycle. It had nothing to do with the lunar Sabbath as Max Joseph has documented and falsely documented, but also as the lunar Sabbath keepers have come to believe and use Max Joseph, of course, as their source, right? But anyways, it's, it's a historical fact that the same week and day sequence exists to this day and has not changed. That's a historical fact. One of the most striking Collateral confirmation of the mosaic history of the creation is the general adoption of the division of time into weeks, which extends from the Christian states of Europe to the remote shores of Hindustan, and has equally prevailed among the Hebrews, Egyptians, Chinese, Greeks, Romans, and northern barbarians. Nations, some of whom had little or no communication with others, and were not even known by name to the Hebrews. Now, what does this mean? Well, you look up the word Sabbath. In Arabic, it means Sabbat or Saturday. Sorry, Saturday in different languages. It means Sabbat in Arabic, Shabbat in Armenian, Sabota in Bosnian, Sabota in Bulgaria, Sabadu in Corsican, Croatia, it's Sabota, Czech, it's Sabota, Sabadi in Georgian, etc. I could go through the whole thing. Shabbat in Hebrew, right? So the word there, Shabbat, 
was scattered to the different languages at the Tower of Babel. And so they adopted Shabbat in all these different languages since that time and before, because it's always been the seventh day has always fallen on Saturday. And Saturday around the world is usually called Sabbat or Sabbat or Sabbath or whatever it is. It's got this title on it because it's been a continual weekly cycle since creation. And so this just destroys the lunar Sabbath argument completely. It's not even, it's not, there's no documentation of it, but there is documentation of a change of the Sabbath. Daniel 7.25 talks about it where he talks about this man of sin who thinks to change times and laws thinks to change times and laws but he doesn't but anyways it, we know that this change took place the catholic church by virtue of her divine mission changed the day from saturday to sunday that's the catholic mirror and so this change has taken place there is documentation there is historical evidence of a change of the sabbath but this is the only historical evidence that we have and that has to do with the catholic church changing the day from saturday the day of saturn as they called it or Shabbat, that Shabbat, Sabbata, whatever language you want to use, to Sunday. That's that's the that's the change. That's the only change that's documented in history. So to summarize everything, the new moon is a holy day. It was kept by the Jews. It will be kept in heaven, and it was not nailed to the cross. It's the new moon is definitely not nailed to the cross. That's we learned about the new moons here at the beginning of this. Annual Sabbaths of the feasts are kept on the fifteenth of the first month and the seventh these are different than a weekly sabbath these are not weekly sabbaths the jews came out of egypt on the 15th of the first month the weekly sabbath has a preparation there's no work done at all on the weekly sabbath um number five history documents that the jews never kept the eighth and 15th day we've went over the history but history on number six is that the history does document that the bible was kept on saturday that the sabbath was kept on a saturday all the way through history, even before the time of Jesus, it was kept on the day of Saturn, they said, they called it. And it was not a Sabbath that began at the sunset in the morning, as some have come to teach now, right? And also remember also that we learned that the, the preparation day always falls on a Friday. There's no preparation day for an annual Sabbath, which means there is no Wednesday crucifixion. That's another false doctrine, right? Um, changing the national holy day of the Jews from a lunar Sabbath would have been protested, and there there would be writings concerning it. It would be it would be documented. So the Bible doesn't say anywhere to use the moon to start the Sabbath cycle. That's total assumption, and so all these things have been you know completely disproven. If anybody wants, I have a book on this as well that I've written, and it has all this documentation. I have a PowerPoint here I'm willing to give out if anybody wants to use something like this or is doing studies with people you can just ask me and i will give it to you so that you can share it with other people because i do individual studies myself and i i like to have all of, all of my documents in order when i'm sharing things and so these are documents that you can keep on hand and actually have you just have to email me dbaron at gmx.com and ask me for the slides or the powerpoint and i will send it to you in an email all right anyways i'm going to um close up here if that's okay Let's have a prayer. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Father, for your word. Your word is truth. And Father, we understand that there are many doctrines coming among us that are meant to just make us question the plainest things in your word. And that is that old devil, the this, this serpent who wants us to spiritualize and misunderstand so that we, we have less faith in your word. But your word is true and your word always always proves all the false doctrines wrong. So we thank you for that word. You are a God who cannot lie, a God of integrity, and your word is your integrity, your word you put above your name. And Father, we just thank you for that, that um, we have an honest God. And we pray also for the people who are believing in some of these doctrines, that they can be honest people as well and say, look, we see that this is not truth and come to accept the truth regarding the Sabbath, the truth regarding the flat earth, as we talked about yesterday, and that they can come to stand on the same platform and we can all stand together, all for one another and reflecting the glory of your throne. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> all right, that's it. Thank you, David. That was very insightful.
We really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And again, if you want the slides or whatever, you guys just email me dbaron at gmx.com because you know, there's people I, I run into people all the time and I'm sure everybody else does. And um, you know, yeah, just uh, David, uh, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, do you, does the solar Sabbath have connection to this uh, lunar Sabbath thing? Because I noticed that solar Sabbath people also have have different Sabbath days like that. Is it connected or? I'm not, I, I have no idea what a solar Sabbath thing is. I haven't even heard of that. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah. Well, there's some people that call, the, call themselves the solar Sabbath. They claim they're not lunar Sabbaths, but their Sabbaths that turn out to be the same type of thing. And they don't go by the moon. They go by the equal Vern Vernox. Are those the know. ones though that, that are morning to night? Uh, I know that's a precursor to it yeah a lot yeah, of times it says so morning to night and that also some lunars but yeah. that would be solar that would be the sun so i don't know yeah i just was curious if there was connection because they have they kind of have a similar could you give your email again david please slowly it's d b a r r o n d baron at gmx.com Awesome. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you. All right, yeah. guys. God bless you. And be with you. Thank you, David. Yeah. God bless you. Thanks, Keep David. up the good work, eh? Keep yeah. up the good work. Praise God. Okay, give me a minute, Tom.